Hey gorgeous, welcome back to the makeup aisle. Today's video is going to be a tutorial on this look you see right here. I got this request from a friend of mine by the name of Jaritza. Hey girl. Um, she actually just purchased the Juvia's Place Masquerade palette and reached out and asked me to do a tutorial. She wants to break out of her comfort zone, use colors that are a little more colorful. And I said, absolutely, I've already been thinking about doing a tutorial. This palette is just amazing and gorgeous. And if you already own Juvia's palette, uh, place palettes you absolutely know what I'm talking about they are raved about for a reason because they are excellent quality eyeshadows I decided to do a little fun stuff with my hair here and just take it to the max I actually have two lip looks that I'm gonna finish off the video with this was the second one the first one is going to be a more nude shade so that you can have your pick of whether you want to go a little more nude or really go and pop the color you know just take it to the max and do it so without further ado let's get started I'm going to start off by priming my eyelids with my MAC Paint Pot and Painterly. And I'm just using a concealer brush to get that all over. So today I am going to be using the Juvia's Place Masquerade Palette, but to actually set this uh, primer down. I'm going to go into the Juvia's Place Saharan palette because I didn't have kind of a flesh colored right here actually flesh colored shade to lay that down with the masquerade palette and I wanted to definitely do that. So I am going to pick up my Sigma E40 which is a tapered blending and I'm going to go into that shade which is Katsina and I am just going to set this primer. So once I have primed the eyelids and set the primer in place, I am going to go into the Juvia's Place Masquerade Palette, and this is for my girl Jaritza Ortiz, who just recently bought this palette. She's trying to get more into makeup, and she's like, I need a tutorial. I'm looking at it, and I get scared and intimidated, and it is kind of intimidating when you look at it because it's so colorful, but that's what gets you out of your comfort zone. It's spring. It's going to be summer soon, and it, this is the perfect opportunity to definitely go in uh, with more color and try more colorful looks. So to start with, I am going to go into the shade Dahlia, which is right here. It's a gorgeous blue. And I am going to be using my Sigma blending brush, which is the E25. As you can see, it's already packed with blue because I did the other eye. So what I'm going to be doing here, if you can tell from your angle there, is um, a nice halo eye. So I am just going to be packing this shade on the corner outer corner and inner corner of the eye but i'm going to leave the middle alone so that i can pack on that green color Once I finish setting down that first shade, which is Dahlia, I am then going to go into this darker blue, which is called Chi or Chai, um, but I think it's Chi. And it almost has a purple undertone to it, but it's a really nice deep blue. And I'm going to put that right on top of Dahlia so that that blue really has a lot of depth and dimension. And when you're looking at it or moving around, you know that there's something else going on there than just, a, you know, like a regular blue. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up that shade Chi with the same brush that I was using and I'm going to pack this right on top of Dahlia.
So as you can see, the blue is really popping now as I've added the Chi onto Dahlia. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my MAC 242 brush as I normally do to pack on any pigment. And I am going to spray that with a little bit of MAC Fix Plus. And then I'm going to go into the shade Molly, which is this green right here. I was going to do this blue and then decided just to do the green because I want this to be a very, very colorful look. And this pigment is absolutely beautiful. So once that's all over my brush, I'm basically just going to go into the middle, as you can see where that space is empty, and I'm going to start applying this shade. Now, once you feel that you've gotten the color packed on how you want it, when you saw me doing the technique, obviously I wanna fill in the middle, but then I will move into each side just a bit so that it looks pretty well shaded in, so that it's not just green and then the blue on the sides, but so that it looks almost like a gradation of color and everything's kind of blended in, even though the green does pop and it's very prominent in the middle, you still wanna get a little bit of blendability um, but I don't blend it in too much because I don't want to lose that halo effect. So once the green is on there, I am just going to grab any fluffy brush with no shading on it, no color. I'm just grabbing a Smashbox fluffy brush here. And I'm going to start blending that out up top to kind of start um, getting rid of that harsh line and really having this look a little more blown out. You're going to have, like I said, the green is going to be very prominent in the middle, which is fine. That's what we want but we don't want it to be too harsh up top. And as you can see, that's blending out pretty nicely. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back into the Saharan palette and I'm gonna grab a little bit more of that Katsina that I used at the beginning to set the primer and I'm gonna use that to kind of buff that out. So like I said, you see, once you start blending it out, you get a little bit of smokiness, even though you have the blue, green, blue, you still want to blend that out so that it looks um, really nice and soft up top. For the brow bone, I'm going to go back into the Masquerade palette and I'm going to grab a little bit of this shade, which is Giza right here. It's the lightest shade. It does have a little shimmer and I don't know if you can tell that from this eye, um, but I want it to kind of stick as much as I could with the Masquerade palette instead of grabbing other colors. So I went ahead and used that one, which was fine. I'm going in with my Juvia's Place J127 Precision Brush, and that's this one right here. And I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of that Giza. And then I'm just gonna highlight the brow bone. This is a shimmery shade, so if you really don't want a shimmery brow highlight, then I would recommend to maybe grab um, something else from another palette or another individual shadow. But again, because I wanted to stick as much as I could with the Masquerade palette, I went ahead and did that with that shade. I'm gonna clean up under the eye with a makeup remover wipe. That's pretty much the actual eyelid done. And then when we're done with our face, we will go ahead and finish off the bottom of both eyes. Next, I am going to do my liner, and as usual, I'm going in with my Maybelline Eye Studio Gel Liner in Blackest Black. Today, I am using the Juvia's Place J129 Angled Brow Brush, but since I draw my eyebrows in, I don't need a brow brush, and I liked kind of the girth of this. It's a little thicker than your regular eyeliner or gel eyeliner brush, so I decided to use it on this eye, and I really like the way it worked. It's got a... um a good like it's not too flexible so it's not flooping all over the place it keeps its shape very nicely So 
So off camera, I went ahead and popped on my false lash and now I'm going to start on my face. So as usual, I'm going to go in with my Makeup Forever Mattifying Primer and today, more than any day that I've done tutorials or videos, it is boiling in my house. Um, we haven't put in the units yet for air conditioning because we live in Connecticut. We may get a snowstorm in like two days. Not really, but we might. Um, but it is really, really warm in here. And I already showered, washed my face, and I had to go ahead and wipe it back down with a makeup remover wipe because I was just getting so glisteny, and that is so not cute. And I also am suffering from allergies, so my eye just keeps watering. I'm a mess today, a complete and utter mess. So I have the primer on my face. Today's um, foundation is going to be the Immaculate Liquid Powder Foundation from Hourglass. This is a little dark for my skin right now, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a few drops of the shade ad adjusting drops from the Body Shop, which is enlightening. Before I put on my foundation, I am gonna color correct quickly, and I'm using the Smashbox Color Correct Crayon. I love the delivery system on this because it's just really neat and it works really nicely. So I'm gonna use the pointed end of my Real Technique sponge just to kind of press that into the skin and do the same thing there. And then I'm gonna start applying the foundation onto my face just with a foundation brush, but then I am going to blend it in with a beauty blender. And with this foundation, you need to work very, very quickly because like I said, it is a cream to powder or liquid to powder, and they are not joking when they say it. This is like worth every penny. It's an expensive foundation, but if you have oily skin, sweaty skin, oily T-zone, whatever that may be, this foundation is so worth it and so perfect. To conceal under my eyes today, I am going in with the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. Um, it, this just, and I keep saying it, once this concealer came on the scene, it literally just blew everything out of the water. It is so full coverage and so beautiful on the skin. It's just gorgeous. To set the concealer, I'm gonna be going into the Contour Palette from Koki Professional. Um, I think I have this coming up in a video from a haul that I um, that I did. And I'm gonna use the banana shade from this. I was very intrigued with this because it looks just like the Kat Von D shade in light. And this was $12. So I'm gonna go in with my Juvia's Place tapered brush to set my under eye concealer. So that is definitely brightening, so I'm gonna to try to brush some of that away. To set the foundation, even though to be honest, you don't even need to set this because this is so mattifying, um, I am gonna go in with my Wet n Wild Pressed Powder. This is the Photo Focus one. Just gonna put a little bit because really this foundation is a very, very matte. Um, I'm just really anal about that and need to set my face. So I'm just going to put a little bit, not too much. But I think too that this helps if you have a very, very oily skin to just set it a little more. So now that that part is done, I am going to go up go ahead and finish off the bottom of the eyes. So I'm gonna go back into the Masquerade palette, but I'm not gonna use the same shades that I used up top. I'm gonna to go into this pink, which is Zobo, and then this purple, which is Makeda or Maketa, and I'm gonna use those for the bottom. So I'm going to start out with my Sigma Flat Definer E15 brush, 
and I am going to pick up the Maketa because that is more of a pigment than a matte. So I just want to basically um, almost tight line the bottom lash line with that shade. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Zobo and I am going to use this smudge brush from Real Techniques and I am just going to buff that out, buff that purple out with the pink. So I really like the way that looks, um, very colorful and just has great pops of color. I love this palette so much. And then for the inner corner of the eye, I am going to use the same light shade um, Giza that I used to highlight the brow bone. So for the inner corner, I'm going to go in with my BH Cosmetics V9 brush, which is super, super tiny, which is great because you can get into the inner corners really nicely. So I'm going to pick up that shade Giza. And I am just going to highlight the inner corner. And I do want to make sure that the inner corner highlight is pretty prominent um, because the overall look is very colorful. For bronzer today, I am going to go in with my City Color B Matte Bronzer, and this is in Brown Sugar. I love this bronzer. It's matte. There's no shimmer. There's no glitter. None of that stuff. So if you like a very matte bronzer, this is a really nice choice. I'm going to be picking this up with my BH Cosmetics V1 Fluffy Brush, which I love to apply bronzer with because it just gets a bigger surface area of your face uh, with less strokes. For blush, I'm gonna go in with my MAC Extra Dimension uh, blush and that's in wrapped candy. I have used this already in a tutorial um, And if you saw my eye mats haul you would have seen this blush I picked this up at the Mac store in Times Square when I was in New York a few weeks ago for eye mats The brush that I'm going to be using for my blush today is the BH Cosmetics V3 Which is this nice tapered brush Really love BH Cosmetics brushes and that's why you see me using them so much So I'm going to pick up a little bit of this blush For highlighter today, I am going to be using my highlighter from Love Lux Beauty. It's called What Mermaids Are Made Of, and that's what the packaging looks like. They call this a novelty highlighter, but this highlighter seriously is my ride or die. That's what it looks like. The reflex in this thing are sick. It is so, so beautiful. And when I tell you it lasts forever, it lasts for freaking ever. It's amazing. To apply the highlighter today, I'm going to go in with my Smashbox fan brush. Any fan brush will be fine. Um, I use other brushes, not just fan brushes, but this is what I have on deck today. So that's what I'm going to use. Beware, it is extremely pigmented. So here we go.
talking about what mermaids are made of indeed. <laughs> I'm telling you this thing, if I was to go out right now, I have literally nowhere to go. But if I was going to go out, whether it's clubbing, just hanging out, whatever, this would be on hours and hours and hours later. I've had it happen and people comment and I'm like, my highlighter. And I'm looking, I'm like, holy moly, it looks as good as the time that I put it. So I just, that's why it's my ride or die because it's beautiful. It's extremely pigmented. They will see you from outer space with this thing and it lasts for hours and hours and hours. So I went ahead and styled my hair off camera. I wanted to do something kind of fun and flirty and just off the cuff. So I decided to do two little rolls, messy rolls, so they look cuckoo nuts, but I absolutely love it. Um, I think it goes with this eye look so perfectly. So for lipstick today, to finish off the look, I actually have two options. I'm gonna show you uh, a look, a finished look with a nude lipstick, and then a finished look with a very bright purple lipstick. So we're gonna start out with the nude color, and this is the Wet n Wild Liquid Cat Suit uh, Liquid Lipstick, and this is in Give Me Mocha. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply that and show you uh, what a softer color looks like. So that is what the look looks like with a nude type of lipstick. This is a darker nude, but once it dries down, it actually kind of mattifies. But this, again, is another option. You can go a little more pink if you want. You can go even more nude than this. For my skin, I can't go too nude because it actually washes me out and just doesn't look good at all. So that is the finished look with a nude lipstick. And now I'm going to go ahead and take this lipstick off and I'm going to show you what it looks like with a very vibrant, bright and dark purple lipstick. So the second lip option that I have for you is a Milani Amore Metallics lip cream and that's what it looks like. And this is in the shade Raving Matte. It's a gorgeous purple tone color, like really perfect for this look. So that's the finished look with the purple. I happen to like this look very much as well. If you just wanna take it to the absolute like max with a colorful look, something like this would be absolutely perfect. These liquid lipstick um, from Milani and the one that I used earlier from Wet n Wild are both extremely comfortable mattes. Um, I tend to not like matte lipstick, but these are very comfortable, um, feel very nice on the lips, and don't feel over drying. Of course, they're going to feel a little dry because they are mattes, but overall, I really do like the way these sit on the lips and how they look. So that is the finished look for today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and uh, are inspired to do it on yourself or someone else. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe. Also click the little bell so you get notified as to whenever I upload new videos. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one. Bye.